Hi, I'm Cece with CC Variety TV. We are in Beverly Hills at the Lodge with Golden Globe nominee Jason Isaacs from The State Within. So obviously we are going to have the Globes, which is a big disappointment for all of us, and I would imagine for Jason as well. So let's find a little bit more about that. And obviously it was the Best Actor nominee in a miniseries. I mean, tell us about The State Within. The State Within, well, it's a, you know, the reason I feel really bad, apart from my own selfish thing about not wearing my tux and getting to hobnob with all the stars, is that it's a BBC America show. It was a six-part mini-series. It went down a storm in England. I think it was a three-parter here. And uh, BBC America is this fantastic channel that's in 60 million homes, but they don't have a big advertising budget. So the Golden Globes was a really big deal for them. It's sure. nominated for Best Miniseries. I got a nomination. They got another nomination for something else. And uh, it's a big lost opportunity for them to tell all of America how great their shows are. Well, absolutely, because it also was nominated for Best what, Motion Picture in TV best, as well. Yeah, Best, best Miniseries. And the writer, who's a really good friend of mine, I had to call him the other day and say, you're not coming. I lent him my tux <laughs> from the show. In the show, I had this very, very expensive tailored tux. And he came around to my house, and he got it the other day, and he put it on. It's really, it's like, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, I think he's probably at home parading in front of the mirror of it. As <laughs> Just speak. wishing he had somewhere to go mm. in it. How unfortunate. I mean, nice tux, I imagine. So on The State Within, what... What was your favorite part in the movie? What what was captivating about the movie? Well, I was a good so guy. Much? You know, I, I tell you what it was. It, it's the B, the BBC in Britain and BBC America who put money into it get to make shows that American television would never dare to make. You know, it's very morally grey. It's not made for commercials. When you make shows in America, you have to write a little twist or turn before each commercial to stop people flipping around. Well, when you tell a story over six hours, you know, without any concern for whether people are going to watch it. They didn't underestimate the audience intelligence at all. You have to be smart to watch it. You've got to be on the ball. You can't look away. You can't be doing the crossword at the same time. Really. Um, so it's a, f a really interesting grown-up complex story. And I get to be at the center of it trying to save the world from uh, disaster and from war. And since I'm normally maiming and raping and, and burning and gouging people's eyes out, it was a, a nice change of pace for me. I get to... Wow, I would guess. Know, I got to get the girl a couple of times. Wow. You know, it's always fun. <laughs> so it's you good know. to go get the girl, go home yeah. with the girl. What do you do today, Dad? Well, <laughs> that's you know. So also, now I find it very interesting. You actually went to law school and got your degree in mm. law, but yet you're acting. Well, do you know any lawyers? I mean, I have a lot more fun <laughs> than they do, you know. I have a lot of lawyers that represent I have a guys. lawyer. I'm sure he'd like to swap. <laughs> you know, I get to go out and do... Uh, extraordinary things in my day job. You know, I get to do things, in fact, that I would do for a hobby at the weekend if I did something else for right. a living. And uh, lawyers are always trying to get out of the office. So you know, well, this is more true. fun and I get on, get to you know, come to glamorous locations like this and meet you and I get to wear funny clothes, put on funny voices, kill people, be killed, love, you know, save the world and all that stuff. Well, and, now uh, how, you're also in Harry Potter. Wasn't they're making number six right now and I'm not in the sixth book. So I'm not in the sixth film. I have to wait for them to make number seven, and uh, you know I'm counting the wow, days. Wow, you're like. <laughs> yeah. And Daniel Radcliffe, who plays Harry Potter, is off to Broadway right. to do Equus on Broadway for a Another while. Another so naked. I mean, you still doing the naked he's thing? He's naked every night. Wow. I don't think he varies it night to night. I think he's always <laughs> naked. And so they'll be waiting uh, uh, for him to finish to come back to start number seven, and I'm chomping at the bit. Yeah. Wow, that has to be a lot of fun to work on that. I mean, the locations yes, themselves in themselves. Well, I don't want to give the magic away, but you know, there isn't really a Hogwarts. Oh, come on! We don't really fly and all that stuff. It all happens in one studio. This strike has affected everybody uh, in the world. I live in London, but I'm in an American TV series, Brotherhood. And Brotherhood is, like every other American TV series, not shooting at the moment, and nobody's working, and the crews aren't working, and so uh, it's tough. I, when, hopefully, the strike is over and everybody gets a fair settlement, uh, I think we might be doing some more Brotherhood. I have a film called Good with Viggo Mortensen that's coming out uh, later this year, and uh, they haven't quite finished it, but they're hoping to get it submitted to Cannes in time. So you're married to Emma, very beautiful. You've got is it two children? I've got two little girls. We're going to Disneyland on Monday. We're very excited. Are you yeah. really? That yeah. is awesome. Mm. Awesome. Now, now everyone's back at school. In fact, they're you know they should be back at school in London as well. So I'm hoping that there's going to be no lines because my memory of Disneyland, I last went when I was 16, is there are lines like and that. Lines. You, you go there and all lines. day and you get to do two rides. I'm hoping <laughs> we'll get to do thousands of rides. Well, they know the Pirates of the Caribbean is like obviously their most uh, famous one. That's they haven't the seen Pirates of the Caribbean. If they, have, they don't see anything I'm in, you know, they don't see any kids' films because I I put the classics on them. They watch Mary Poppins and. Uh, you know, they watch films that have no bad guys. Because the thing about films is they're full of these nightmare things. Right. You know? My five-year-old is sophisticated now. She watches movies and she goes, this time it's the mum that's dead, Dad. <laughs> this time it's both parents. <laughs> this one's an orphan before it starts. Because she gets that kids' films always kill one or both of the parents. Oh, my God. But uh, Pirates of the Caribbean is pretty scary. Do you, Bill do you, Nye do you with sleep with one eye face. open? <laughs> she, they don't sleep. They're like their dad. They're all insomniacs. 
<laughs> we're in Hollywood. They're waking up at two o'clock in the morning. They want to go out. They don't understand. Oh, they already get they already get the Hollywood itch. Yeah, jet, just when they get over the jet lag, we'll fly back to London, and the nightmare will begin again. So now, at, in London, what's a day in the life of, of you guys in well, you know, home? I have two different lives. I have the working life when I go somewhere and I'm pampered and I get to do the thing that I love, which is pretend to be someone else and uh, you know leave these vicariously lead these very exciting lives. And then I have the very dull suburban dad, scrambled eggs and reading stories and school run stuff. And uh, happily, you know, it's kind of 50-50. All right, so tell us some more other really fun, exciting things about you. Fun and exciting things about me? There are no fun and exciting things about me. Because we know you're pretty loose and, I'm you know, so not so serious. Dull. That's why I get to, I mean, one of the good things about being an actor is you get to go and do exciting things. I get to go and kiss strange women and, you know, be blown up and decapitated and strangle people and all this. So I can go home and I can be desperately dull. And, right. uh, you know, and read stories. I really, my life is, uh, since I had kids, I have no desire anymore to kind of be the last person at the party or paint right. the Saturday or any of that stuff. Right. I don't, you know, it's all about being there. And, and then I go to work and I do these ridiculous things. In the state within that I'm nominated for, there's a plane crash. And I walk through, you know, thousands of people who are maimed and there's burning bodies and all stuff. And, and my four year old, she was then, came to the set and watched it. And then I get to avert a world war. And then I go home and I read Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> I still have to, you, know, a, I don't you know what? That's a good day, though. Oh, it's a that's good day. A good I mean, day. I'm, 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 I'm pretty blessed at the moment because things could get a lot worse, and I, uh, sometimes I can feel sorry for myself for this week when the Golden Globes isn't happening. But the fact is, I get to act all the time, which I love doing. I get pretty well paid for it, and I can walk down the street and take public transport. I'm looking out the window, and this is Los Angeles. Nobody takes public transport. But in London, you know, I, I'm completely anonymous everywhere I go, and yet I, uh, I work all the time. And It's a psychological disease. I've got this thing. If I'm ever talking to a cab driver, my, uh, my wife will lean over and go, you're not Irish. You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> and then that, but actually, that thing of trying to become people when you're talking to them is what I do for a living now. So it's all fine. So if, you, if we were at the Golden Globes and you were to get your domination <laughs> and receive it... If we were at the Golden Globes, yeah. What, what would your speech be? Uh, I you, wouldn't make a have, speech because... Pre uh, something in, prepared? I don't know, no. I think preparing a speech is tempting fate. Uh, first of all, there was no chance of me winning. So in a way, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to sit there and do that. Oh, great. <laughs> anyway, oh, fantastic. I'm so glad you won. Uh, but, you know, I'm nominated in the same category as Ernest Borgnine, who is a, a, you know, a living legend. He's 90 years old, God bless him. He's a phenomenal actor. He lost one in 1955 for Marty. Uh, and... Jim Broadbent is in the same category, who is an acting god, who I personally have voted for in various competitions in England for the same performance in Longford, uh, which is fantastic. Adam Beach is in the category. He's nominated for Bury My Heart at Wind and Knee, which is, was an amazing series. Uh, and then there's a guy called Jimmy Nesbitt, James Nesbitt, who's also nominated. He's one of my oldest friends. It's kind of weird that we're both nominated. Uh, we used to share an apartment together, or rather, I rented the apartment. He slept on my couch for free. And... Uh, <laughs> And the idea that either of us should ever be picked out for acting seemed it's to both surreal. of us completely ludicrous. So, in a way, it's better that we're not there having our fixed grins and misbehaving. My parents had to sit through watching me naked and swear I was castrated once on stage. <laughs> oh you know, and I was constantly doing all kinds of deprivation and uh, perversion uh, parading in front of them. So, when I get to play the British ambassador to Washington in a nice suit and save the right. world, you know, they can finally say to their friends, "Watch my son; he's on television." Nice <laughs> one. <laughs> they can finally call their family, friends, so, They've relatives. seen my guts pulled out. They've seen me, you know, all Decapitated. kinds of ignominy for them. So I think it's, it was nice for them. So now I'm going to quickly ask you, because London's really uh, appealing and where you live. Do you have a big place, a big piece of property? No. Or is it just like California? It's no. all tucked in tight? London houses are an awful lot smaller than California, particularly Los Angeles. So, you know, a big house in London is, is somebody's pool house here. So uh, <laughs> I live opposite a park, which is great, and we all go to the park. We, where we live, we pretty much walk everywhere, or we go by bike, or we get public transport. Well, we were happy to have you here today. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Jason. This is my red and, carpet experience. Uh, this you know, is I won't be carpet. having a red carpet, so <laughs> you represent all of the American media, and you're doing a very good job. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank well, you. We were very happy that you got to talk with us, and um, enjoy Disneyland, and have a safe trip home. And, I will. Uh, and can I just say we'll to anybody, for you. watch BBC America. You've got it. Find it on the dial. It's got great shows.